Hello and welcome back to my couch. Yes, that's right, it's time again for another update and there are plenty of things to talk about. Now, as some of you may already know, I have this tendency to sort of ramble on and on and on pretty much forever. So, to keep this episode a little shorter and a little more concise, I've decided to script things out. However, watching someone read a script is, well, really boring. So I thought instead we could watch some footage of Mario Maker. This way we get a shorter, more concise update video, but also more interesting visuals. It should be a real win-win. And with that said, let's get to it. So as you may have noticed, there hasn't been anything new on the channel since the end of January and the beginning of February. And that's because I've been very, very busy. <laughs> with what you ask? Well, I'll tell you. In this update I'd like to cover a quick recap of uploads between October and February, what's been going on in my life, my health, nothing too serious, games I've been playing, and the future plans for the channel. Okay, so between the end of October and the beginning of February, there were 23 videos uploaded to the channel. First, we had the 7 episode let's play of the Fatal Frame demo for Wii U. I didn't actually end up buying the game because the controls were just too janky. Maybe if it were updated or received a price cut, I'd give it a second chance. Then we had 7 first impression videos covering Gunman Clive HD Collection, Sin and Punishment, Life of Pixel, Cube Director's Cut, Fast Racing Neo, Yoshi's Woolly World, and Xenoblade Chronicles X. After that, there was an update about audio equipment and the new channel promo. Finally, there were seven live action videos, including the five video series covering my top five games of 2015. And then, after those 23 videos in about a three and a half month period, everything went a little quiet. So what's the deal with that? I'll tell you. My wife Jessica and I, and our friends and family, have had lots of wonderful, and a few not so wonderful, things happen in the past few months that have kept us all rather busy. It wouldn't be appropriate to share too many details of other people's lives, nor do I want to dwell on any of the unfortunate events, so here's a quick list of all the good things that happened recently. My parents moved to a new house, my sister became engaged, Jessica and I bought our first house, and two separate couples we know are pregnant with their first children. Obviously, the event which kept Jessica and I the busiest, and about which I can actually share some details, is our first house. At first, the hunt for a new home was going really slowly, and everything was either in terrible shape, really small, or way, way, way out of our price range. Then we switched realtors, and it must have been at just the right time, because we found a place with almost everything we wanted while still being close to work, and it's a relatively new home, and it was within our budget. I really didn't expect things to go so well. We got really lucky and can't wait to move in. So despite a few unfortunate events, there have been plenty of very positive things happening lately which have been keeping us busy. On top of all those life events, I was also rather ill for a while. Around the end of January, I noticed I was constantly overstressed and exhausted. I was having trouble with my digestive system, I was having trouble sleeping, and I pretty much always felt like I had a cold for some reason. On top of all that, I had gained about 20 pounds. So obviously, I wasn't taking care of myself, and needed to take time to do just that. Which was good timing, since I had to take some time away from the channel for house hunting anyways. A big part of the problem was that the frame had cracked on my elliptical back in September, which was one of many problems with a constantly failing machine. So I decided to scrap it, but didn't adequately adjust my diet or exercise routine. On top of that, I had been feeling pretty stressed for quite a while, and had planned to take a week off in January to just, you know, decompress. But instead, I spent 50 to 56 hours that week capturing extra footage and editing video. It was great to get the videos done and uploaded, but you can only push yourself so far. So since the beginning of February, I've been cleaning up my diet, reducing my caffeine consumption, and reducing my alcohol consumption. All of which means I'm sleeping way better. I'm also exercising more. I've been running the 10 flights of stairs in our apartment building, doing more floor exercises like crunches, push-ups, and squats, and going for more walks on weekends, and that's all helping a lot. I'm not sure if I'm actually losing weight, or if I've just managed to stretch out all my clothing, but everything fits way better, so that's nice. The one thing I still need to work on is reducing the amount of junk food I eat on weekends, but I'm getting there. So physically, I'm finally starting to feel better and have some energy again which means I can get back to making videos. Of course, one of the things that really helped my mental health was taking a break from the channel and just playing games for fun. I mean, playing games is always fun, 
but creating videos can be a lot of work, and that's on top of working a full-time job. Taking some time to play games for no other reason than to just relax and have fun made a big, big difference, and really helped me to decompress a bit and stop being so tense and stressed all the time. This brings us to the next topic. What have I been playing recently? That's right, we're finally going to talk about some video games. Now, I have a lot of ongoing games like Splatoon and Mario Maker that can be picked up and played anytime, and some longer experiences like Xenoblade Chronicles X, all of which were mostly put on hold to try some shorter games. I was looking for games that could be finished in under 15 hours, and some as quickly as 5. First, I finally played through Freedom Planet Story Mode as Lilac, and it was absolutely awesome! If you're looking for a new game that plays like an old Sonic game but better, play Freedom Planet. I played a bit as Carol as well, and she's super cool. She's basically the knuckles of the series, but also has a motorcycle. I'm planning to come back and play her story later, but there was another female-led game I'd been meaning to play. Next up was Metroid Zero Mission, which finally hit the North American Wii U eShop, despite being out in Europe for quite some time now. But you know what? It was so worth the wait. Zero Mission is such a wonderful Metroid experience. It's shorter and simpler than Super Metroid, but much, much more than a simple remake of the original Metroid. I won't spoil anything about the story, but the Zero Suit missions were a wonderful touch. Next up was Mother, known on the North American eShop as Earthbound Beginnings, and I have to say, I was very disappointed. Everyone had been crying out for a localized version of this game for so long, and I was expecting it to be... well... good. I mean, it seems well localized, it has a nice art style, and an interesting story. However, the difficulty curve is rather steep, with an initial spike that can only be explained by the fact that this was on an NES. And you know, that could almost be forgiven. The thing that really ruined this game for me was the frequency of the random battles. Sometimes I could walk from one town to another with only a few encounters. But other times, I couldn't go more than a step between battles, and sometimes not even a step. There were seriously times when I'd push a direction on the D-pad, and before the game even animated the sprite for Ness to move, I was already back into another battle! This made exploration near impossible at times, which basically made the game unplayable. Even with a text-based guide, forcing myself to play through the game was a painful experience. So, I skipped on ahead to the next title in the series, Earthbound, and am I ever glad I did. This is a good game. The art style, the music, the sound effects, the localization, the story, the environments, the enemies, the balancing, the battle system, everything is just so freaking good in this game. I don't think I've ever been this charmed by an RPG. The only two minor nitpicks I had were the limited inventories, leading to very frequent management, and the lame final boss. I won't spoil anything, but it feels like the game is leading up to having the player do something in particular, only to have that kind of taken away in the end. That said, it's still a satisfying ending, and a great game overall. I highly recommend playing it if you haven't already, and I'm not sure why it took me over 20 years to check it out. Next up was a replay of Super Mario Bros. 3 via the Wii U eShop version of Super Mario Advance 4. This is basically a lightly upgraded version of the all-star version of Super Mario Bros. 3. This version adds voice acting by Charles Martinet and some really cool e-reader levels which were added upon its release on the Game Boy Advance around 2004. The only downside is that a couple of levels seem minor nerfing, but at its core, this is still the all-star version of Super Mario Bros. 3, which is the best version of the best 2D Mario game ever made. As a result, I've finally been getting back into Super Mario Maker and finally took a look at the bookmark site, which is great! This is everything I said we needed in the game's search function. This is exactly the search that should be built into the game. Why the heck is this a separate website? I mean, look, I guess I should just be happy it works, and that we have access to it at all, but really, Nintendo needs to add this search function into the actual game. With all of that said, we can finally talk a bit about plans for the future of the channel. Videos! Videos are the plan! And I have plenty of ideas for new live-action episodes. But, with the move coming up, and several important family events, I probably won't have time to make any of them for at least a little while. That said, there will still be some new videos coming, well, soonish. 
there are still plenty of shorter games to play and replay that would make for some really fun Let's Plays, and while I'm not entirely sure when I'll have time to get them recorded and edited, I'm hoping to have at least one series up for you by the end of April, so keep your eyes peeled for that. This doesn't mean the channel is moving exclusively to Let's Plays, but I think it'll probably be a while before there's time to devote to live action episodes again. But hey, everyone likes Let's Plays, right? I mean, you're kind of watching one right now. Kind of. Not really. No, not at all. Never mind. Scratch that last part. So there you have it. As you can see, there's been quite a lot going on, and it's not really going to slow down anytime soon. So if you haven't seen any of the 23 videos that went up recently, do me a favor and check those out, and hey, let me know what you thought. Otherwise, I'm hoping to have some Let's Plays ready for you in the near future sometime soon, but in the meantime, stay in the zone. <laughs>